Night Shift by Lilith St. Crow Part 1 Prelude Sit there. A wooden chair in the middle of a flat expanse of hardwood floor, lonely under cold fluorescent light. I lowered myself gingerly, curled my fingers over the ends of the armrests, and condemned my soul to God. Well, maybe not actually condemned. Maybe I was just praying really, really hard. He circled the chair, every step heavy enough to make a noise against bare floorboards. My weapons and my coat were piled by the door, and even the single knife I'd kept safe in its sheath strapped to my thigh was no insurance. I was locked in a room with a hungry tiger who stepped, stepped, turning just a little each time. I didn't shift my weight. Instead, I stared across the room, letting my eyes unfocus. Not enough to warm myself up inside my mind. That was a death sentence. A hunter is always alert, Mikhail says. Always. Any inattention is an invitation to death. And death loves invitations. The hellbreed became a shadow each time he passed in front of me, counterclockwise. And I was beginning to wonder if he was going to back out of the bargain or Welsh on the deal. Which was, of course, what he wanted me to wonder. Careful, Jill. Don't let him throw you. I swallowed. Wished I hadn't. The briefest pause in his even tread gave me the idea that he'd seen the betraying little movement in my throat. I do not like the idea of Hellbreed staring at my neck. Silver charms tied in my hair clinked as the blessed metal reacted to the sludge of Hellbreed filling the ether. This one was bland, not beautiful looking like the other damned. He was unassuming, slim and weak looking. But he scared my teacher terrified him in fact <sighs> only an idiot isn't scared of a hellbreed by the way there's no shame in it you've got to get over being ashamed of being scared because it will slow you down you can't afford that so i almost jumped when his breath caressed my ear hot meaty breath far too humid to be human he was breathing on me my flesh crawled in concentric waves of revulsion. Goose flesh rose up and pebbled. Scales of fear spreading over my skin. Here's the deal. The words pressed obscenely warm against my naked skin. Something brushed my hair delicately, and silver crackled with blue sparks. A hiss touched my ear skin suddenly far too damp. I wasn't sweating. It was his breath condensating on me. Oh, God! He almost choked on bile. I swallowed it and held still, every muscle in my body screaming at me to move, to get away. I'm going to mark you, my dear. While you carry that mark, you will have a gateway embedded in your flesh. Through that conduit, you're going to draw sorcerous energy, and lots of it. It will make you strong and fast, stronger and faster than any of your fellow hunters. You'll have an edge in raw power when it comes to sorcery. Even that weak-kneed trash you monkeys flatter yourself by calling magic. The Hellbreed paused. Cold air hit my wet ear. A single drop of condensation trickled down the outer shell of cartilage, grew fat and tickled unbearably as it traced a dead, flabby finger down to the hollow where ear meets neck. A tender, vulnerable spot. I'll also go as far as to help you keep the city free of those who might interfere with the general peace. Peace is good for profit, you know. A soft, rumbling chuckle brushed against my cheek with its cargo of sponge-rotten breath. I kept my fucking mouth shut. Stay silent until he offers you all he's going to offer me, Laya. Mikhail's advice. Good advice. I was trained, wasn't I? At least mostly trained. A hunter in my own right.
and this was my chance to become... What? Even better. It was a golden opportunity, and if he thought I should take it, I would. And I wouldn't screw it up. I would not let my teacher down. So stay quiet, Jill. Stay calm. I kept breathing softly through my mouth. The air reeked of hellbreed and corruption. Tasting that scent was as bad as breathing it through my nose. I just couldn't figure out which was worse. Something hard and rasping, like a cat's tongue, flicked forward and touched the hollow behind my ear, pressing a few stray strands of hair. If I hadn't been so fucking determined to stay still, muscles locked up tighter than Val's old cash box, I might have flinched. But the touch retreated so quickly, I wasn't sure I'd felt it. Except that little drop of condensation was gone, wasn't it? Shit, now I was sweating too bad to tell. The Hellbreed laughed again. Very good, little hunter. The bargain goes thus. You bear my mark and use the power it provides you as you see fit. Once a month, you'll come visit and you'll spend time with me. That's all. A little bit of time each month for superlative use of the power I grant you. You might have to spend a little more time, say five or six hours. Now it was negotiation time. I wet my lips with my tongue, wished I hadn't, because suddenly I knew his eyes were fastened on my mouth. Half an hour, maximum. Bargaining on street corners taught me that much, at least. You never take the John's first offer, and you never, ever, ever start with more than half of what you're willing to give. Sometimes you can pick who buys you, and for how much. That's what power really is. <laughs> you wound me. The Hellbury didn't sound wounded. He sounded delighted, his bland tenor probing at my ear. Three hours. See how generous I am for you. This is too easy. Be careful. An hour a month. Maximum of two. And your help on my cases. Final offer, Hellbreed, or I walk. I didn't come here to be jacked around. Why had I come here? Because Mick Hale said I should? I wondered if it was another test I'd failed or passed. I wondered if I'd just overstepped and was looking at a nasty death. Bargaining with a Hellbreed is tricky. Hunters usually just kill them. But this wasn't so simple. This was either a really good idea or a really bad way to die. A long, thunderous moment of quiet, and the room trembled like a soap bubble. Something like masses of gigantic flies on a mound of corpses buzzed, rattling. Hell tongue. The language of the damned. It lay under the skin of the visible, like fat underskin, dimpling the surface tension of what we tried to call the real world. Done, little hunter. We have a bargain, if you agree. My throat was like the Sahara, dry and scratchy. A cough caught out in the open turned into a painful, ratcheting laugh. What do you get out of this, Perry? That scaly, dry, probing thing flicked along my skin. Again. Rasped for the briefest second against the side of my throat, just a fraction of an inch away from where the pulse beat frantically. I sucked at keeping my heart rate down. Mikhail warned and warned me about it. Sometimes we like being on the side of the angels. The Hellbreed's voice dropped to a whisper that would have been intimate if the rumbling of hell hadn't been scraping along underneath. It makes the ending sweeter. Besides, peace is good for profit. Do we have a deal, little hunter? Oh, Christ, Mikhail. I hope you're right. I didn't agree to it because of the Hellbreed, or even because the thought of that much power was tempting. I agreed because Mikhail told me I should. Even though it was my decision, it wasn't really a trader's bargain if I was doing it for my teacher, was it? Was it? We have a deal. Four little words. They came out naturally, 
stopped smoothly without a hitch. Hot, iron fingers clamped over my right wrist. Oh, good. A slight wet smacking sound, like a hungry toddler at the breakfast table, and he wrenched my hand off the arm of the chair. Pale, tender underside of my wrist turned up to face cold, fluorescent light. My heart jackhammered away, adrenaline soaking copper into the roof of my mouth, and I bit back a cry. It was too late. Four tiny words and I'd just signed a contract. Now we'd see if Mick Hale was right, and I still had my soul.